Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today I'm going to be talking about our biological clocks, also known as our circadian rhythms. Now I say rhythms with an S because there are so many different oscillations occurring in our body, all which coincide with a 24-hour cycle. Humans are diurnal, meaning that we are awake during daylight and sleep during darkness. But our rhythms are so much more than just sleep-wake. Almost every cell in our body operates with daily cycles. Literally different genes are expressed at different times of day. It's actually mind-blowing. Organs from our pancreas to our liver to our stomach all have clear cycles of operation. Our blood glucose typically rises towards the end of the day, whereas our cortisol levels are actually at their highest right before we're about to wake up. But why is this actually important to us in self-care? In order to coordinate the systems in our extremely complex bodies, we rely really heavily on these rhythms. And if we're living in ways that clash with the natural rhythms of our body, that can cause a lot of issues. In literature, this clash is called circadian mismatch, and it's been linked to so many negative health conditions from hormone disbalance to increased risk of developing certain diseases like cardiovascular disease. It compromises our immunity, our cognition, and so much more. Now, I'm sure you don't need science to tell you that sleep is important, but I do think it's helpful to underline the extent to which every tissue in our body is influenced by these rhythms, and that working with our own natural body rhythms can actually be one of the best things we do for our health. The way we metabolize glucose, for example, is different during daylight hours and during times when we're meant to be sleeping. Eating a really big meal in the middle of the night is not the optimal time for your body to be processing food. Studies of night shift workers or graveyard shift workers show that their risk of metabolic disease and cardiovascular disease is greatly increased as compared to people who follow normal daylight working shifts, even when receiving the same amount of sleep. Our bodies keep time, so to speak, from both internal and external cues. The master timekeeper, our suprachiasmatic nucleus, is actually located behind our eyes in our brain and it helps relay external information, in this case light, to internal messengers in our body. But light is not the only cue that has been found to influence how our bodies keep time. Our timing of physical activity and eating meals are also influential signals that tell our body what time it is. Interestingly though, there also seem to be strong genetic cycles in the cells of our bodies that are largely independent of external cues. A 2015 study by Harvard Medical School actually observed people while they were completely isolated from the world for one month. What this study did was use artificial light cues to recreate a week that consisted of six days of 28-hour days. Those subjects began following the sleep-wake cycles of these 28-hour days their bodies were still operating on 24-hour clocks. They still had predictable cortisol spikes and melatonin surges at periods that followed 24-hour days. So even though these subjects were living in a 28-hour day world, their bodies were still following a 24-hour cycle. There are also existing theories that morning people tend to have slightly shorter cycles and that night owls tend to have a little bit longer cycles than 24 hours. Though the research on this is not conclusive, there is an interesting study that looked at fibroblasts were taken out and studied in the lab and the cycles of these cells actually match the humans that they came from. So although we don't under completely understand the interaction between internal and external cues for our biological clocks, there are clear rhythms that heavily dictate how our body functions at different times of day and night. And scientific literature is unified in stating that mismatches between our natural body rhythms and how we're living can cause a host of health problems. I'm sure we have all been inspired by a famous CEO to wake up every day at dawn, or there's been a period of our lives where we're coerced by our friends to stay out every day until dawn, but really consistently living in a way that feels right for our bodies is gonna be the best thing for our health. So we can really help ourselves by adopting routines that complement our 24-hour cycle, being consistent with our daily cues when we exercise, when we eat, when we expose ourselves to light and dark, can help our bodies function optimally. 
When adjusting and figuring out your own rhythm, be gentle and also listen to your body and how it's reacting to things. If working out in the morning makes you feel terrible for the rest of the day and depleted of energy, then maybe it's not right for you. If you personally find it difficult to wake up at 5 a.m., don't force yourself. If you've just made an international journey, be kind to your jet-lagged body as it adjusts to a new time zone. It can be so worth it to take time to reflect on what works for us physically and in our schedules so that we can create routines that are sustainable and healthful. So that was my very abstract introduction to circadian rhythms. I hope that you found it helpful. I definitely would love to make more concrete videos on sleep and other rhythms in our body uh, in the future. So if there are any specific things you're dying to learn about, please do comment below. I will peruse the comments for video topic ideas. Um, but the key takeaway of this video is that one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself is follow a consistent sleeping and eating and exercising pattern and one that is not too extreme, <laughs> one that works for your life and your body. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.